Hey guys, in this video we're going to cover how to create MIDI clips and use the key editor to manually program MIDI in Cubase 12. Those new to Cubase 12, the key editor is basically like a piano roll in other digital audio workstations. In our previous video we went over adding MIDI and instrument tracks and getting them set up to output audio, so make sure to check out that first so your tracks are working properly. Before we can edit MIDI and use the key editor, we first need to create a MIDI event or clip on either the MIDI track or the instrument track. You should be able to set up both after watching our previous videos. I've set up the Halion Sonic Synthesizer with the Clearview Piano Instrument. MIDI clips can also be created through recording a MIDI instrument, but we'll cover that in another video. To draw a clip, go to the toolbar at the top panel and select the Draw tool. Also make sure grid snapping is enabled and that the project tempo is configured for your song. We want to make sure our MIDI notes snap to the timeline and adjust based on musical time for this to work best, especially if we're going to combine different instruments and audio and use a metronome. With that tool selected, click and drag on the MIDI or instrument track to create a clip of whatever length you would like. Once the MIDI clip is created, double click it to open the key editor. The default location is that the key editor will open in the editor in the bottom zone. We can start with the arrow in the top right of the key editor to open it in a new window and that way we'll have more space. You can also use the gear on the right side to select show all. You may not want to use all these tools after but make them visible for the tutorial so you can follow along and know how to access them. Let's cover how to use the key editor view. In the top left we have the solo editor which solos the clip in the editor during playback for our project so we can focus in on our MIDI clip that we're writing. Next to that is the MIDI record button to use a MIDI controller and the retrospective record button to add notes that were played when the recording was not activated. Moving more to the right, the next button is the pitch visibility button. With this we can choose to change which notes are displayed. This is based on the settings in the next drop down. The first one is for show pitches with events, meaning that if we have written out our MIDI piece, it will collapse the piano down and only show the notes that have been written without all the notes in between. After that we have show pitch from scale assistant. To find the scale assistant, make sure the left zone is visible with the button in the top right of the window. The left zone will have the scale assistant which will set to use editor scale and we can select the editor scale to correspond with the song. In this case I'll use C major and we can see that the view now collapses down to just those notes. It will also give you a warning if you have notes in the MIDI clip that are not in that scale which we can see when I switch to a different scale. The next set of buttons controls the project and editor cursor. This only applies to the key editor when it's in the bottom zone, not in its own window. The link button will make sure the project cursor and the editor cursor below are linked on the zoom and view of the timeline. The next button is Auto Scroll which controls what happens to the view when the cursor extends past the right side of the window. If it's active, the Auto Scroll will move the window over. The cursor can also stay stationary with all the notes in the timeline moving along in the background. This is just like the scrolling tools for the project above that we talked about previously. Acoustic Feedback plays the notes to the VST instrument whenever we click them on the piano roll view. With this off, we won't be able to hear the notes we're adding. Next we have the toolbar. The select tool is used to highlight a group of notes. Then we can do things like move or delete them. The draw tool is used to add notes and the eraser removes them. The trim tool cuts the end of a note off at the position it's clicked. It does not trim the start time of the note. The split tool cuts the note at the click position and the glue tool puts them back together. The X is used to mute particular notes without deleting them. The 
The magnifying glass allows us to zoom in and if we click with control held on the keyboard, it will zoom out. Like in the project zone above, the key editor has zoom and scroll controls along the bottom and side. After that, we have time warp tools to change the project timing at that point, so our notes will speed up or slow down for a segment. The last tool is a line that can add multiple notes at once. The Auto Select Controllers tool will link controller data to MIDI notes, particularly if we need to move them around. The arrow button to the right allows the clip to play back as a loop, but we need to expand it and set the start and stop points. The next tools are for note expression and can open that window for our clip if our MIDI instrument can use this type of input. This can be edited from here with the draw tool. The show note expression data button shows this new line that we draw over the MIDI note on the key editor below. Indicate Transpositions tool shows us the transpose pitch of recorded MIDI notes if we were to transpose them. Next is the default velocity, which is another factor along with pitch and time that is recorded for a note in MIDI. It's basically how hard the note is hit and adjusts things such as loudness and attack through the MIDI instrument. This button controls the default velocity for each new note that's added and it's defaulted here at 100. The range of velocity is from 0 to 127. The next set of tools are for nudging the beginning and ends of the notes. First we keep it set to link to grid so it snaps to the musical time. Then we select a note or group of notes with the select tool. The nudge start left button lengthens the start time of the note by making it start earlier and the nudge start right button shortens the clip by making it start later. The end point of the clip will stay the same. The left and right arrows move the entire note's start and end time forward or backwards. The last two buttons nudge the end of the note to shorten or lengthen it. The up and down arrows on the right are for transposing a note or set of notes up and down by a semitone or an octave. Moving on to the next section, we get the grid control. I always leave this on with MIDI to be able to snap them to musical time. The grid indicator just means that we're snapping to the grid when we add or move things. It can also be set to relative or events to move clips as we talked about previously. The snapping in the key editor is based on the quantization resolution, which can be a quarter note, eighth note, or whatever is chosen. This only applies to the start time of the note. Quantization itself is used more to adjust the time of recorded MIDI notes, and we'll look at that in another video. The L Quantize dropdown is used to quantize the length of the notes rather than just the start time. The next button shows us where the clip borders are. If we use the squares in the bottom of the clip in the project zone, we can expand or shrink the clip. It's important to make sure we're adding notes within the zone or they won't play unless the clip is expanded out. The next button is to allow us to edit other clips that are on the same track from within the same key editor, even if they're separate clips. The drop down to the right is for selecting the active clip that we're editing. The next set of tools are for step input. These tools allow you to play one note at a time on a MIDI keyboard and input them all individually instead of trying to play the melody all at once. 
The step input tool will add the notes or chords sequentially and snap them to the key editor grid based on the start and length quantization times. There's also the move insert mode that will shift all the notes after by a set amount if we try to insert notes before them. The last drop down is for event colors. This changes the color of the notes on the key editor. Right now at the default they're all the same color and that's because we've been manually adding all these notes with the mouse at the same velocity and the color is set by velocity. We can see that if we change it to pitch we get different colors but that all the notes of the same note and different octaves are the same color. This also corresponds to the velocity panel underneath and will help us to get the right note to adjust the velocity on after. Now that we have covered the tools in the key editor, let's add some notes. To start adding notes, set your quantize start time and length appropriately, then set the note insert velocity. Decide if you want the entire piano view or the scale assistant note view. Select the draw tool from the toolbar at the top. Then we can just click on the grid to add notes at the right time and pitch. We can move to the select tool and press the delete key to remove them or select multiple notes to do the same. Then use all the tools we looked at above to make adjustments as needed. At the bottom, we have controls for the controller lanes. These can be switched with the drop down for things like velocity, pitch bend, and aftertouch. I'll show you how this works for velocity. As we mentioned, velocity is basically representing how hard that note is hit. Each note on the key editor has a corresponding bar with a velocity value of 0 to 127. If we switch to the select tool, we can click and drag on the velocity bar up or down to change it. If there are multiple notes at the same time, clicking the velocity bar alone will change the velocity of all of them. To adjust the velocity separately, we would need to select all the notes individually on the key editor grid above and then adjust them. That covers how to use the key editor or piano roll in Cubase 12. In the next video, we'll go over how to use the drum editor in Cubase. Thanks for checking out this video on writing MIDI and using the piano roll in Cubase 12. If this video helped you out, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and check out our social media to see all our new content.